Well, good morning, Journey Church. How's everybody doing today? It's a special day as we honor all the moms today. And let me just go ahead and say to all the moms in the house, Happy Mother's Day. Did they, let me ask you a question. Did they pamper you a little bit today? How many of y'all got breakfast in bed? Uh, oh, that was a good, a good laugh up here. Okay. So, y'all, y'all sit down for a minute. I know everybody's like anxious to jump to your feet and start worshiping. But we're going to open in prayer here in a minute. We're trying to get people in. Do me a favor if you could. If there's chairs in the middle, kind of squeeze in. Leave those chairs on the outside rows. Help the ushers out a little bit. And before we dive into worship, we're talking about pampering moms. Stacy and I were driving this morning on the way up here, and we were talking about different gifts that we give at Mother's Day. And I know the traditional gifts and all that kind of stuff. But I started thinking about the worst Mother's Day gifts that you could ever give. And I made a list. Y'all want to hear it? Okay. Number one, a vacuum cleaner. Yeah? Yeah? Would you ladies love to get that gift? No, no, not on Mother's Day. How about this? Here's a good one. Here's a good one. A parenting book. I know y'all like, wait, it's Mother's Day. You're not supposed to be telling dad jokes. It's real. It's a real up in here. Here, here's another good one. Okay. How about a scale? Oh, Stacy said, are you really going to share that? I'm like, absolutely. Remember, these are the worst Mother's Day gifts that you could ever give, okay? Because these are just absolutely awful gifts. Now, what are the best gifts that you could give? How about this, moms? How about flowers? Yeah? How about jewelry? Okay. Okay. How about a card? Is a card good on Mother's Day? Yeah, all moms like to get a card. And I just want to know, how many of y'all love something that is handmade from your children? Okay. And now, let me clarify, as long as they're 12 or under, right? If they're like 43 and they're making you like the little macaroni thing, it's not cool anymore, all right? So just some fun things to be able to do on Mother's Day. And moms, we just honor you. We celebrate you and all the hard work that you do to to take care of the family. So let's do this. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to have a great service today as we prepare our hearts and our minds to worship the Lord, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to just spend time in the Word, and uh, also as we just honor moms. So let's pray together. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for your presence here with us today. And God, we just thank you that our hearts and spirits are open to you to do whatever within our lives that you want. That you would refresh us, Lord God. You would refill us with your presence. And God, we just thank you for all the mamas in the house, Lord, even the ones who are not able to be here today. And we just speak your blessings over their lives, Lord God. And Lord, thank you so much for all that they do to take care of their families, Lord God. And Lord, today as we turn our attention and our mind to you, Lord, we just worship you and honor you in Jesus' name. Let's everybody say together. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord.
is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. Jesus in the streets, 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, oh, 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 shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. to or gather, God, you are here. Lord, we thank you that we get to worship you this morning. God, we praise you. In Jesus' name. to join the song sung long before our lives to raise our voice along heaven and earth alive we've seen your faithful Mercy without end, the King who bled and died, a God who sacrificed, and be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations, you are worthy, Lord. To you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice with heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all. All through this life we lead, and on to eternity. Yes, we 
Would you close your eyes across this place and stay in this moment of worship? And would you just envision the Lamb of God on the cross, the price that he paid for us? Would you behold the Lamb of God in this moment? And with a heart full of thanks and praise, we sing, all hail King Jesus. We praise you, our risen King. We remember and we honor you this morning in this place. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse his blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. But not the ends we could have known. For the earth began to shake, and the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens roared? Would you lift your hands across this place?
very reason why we gather here today is because of what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. Amen. And today we honor him. If we get to just take a moment just to maybe close our eyes and just raise our hands across this room just to honor him and to worship him. And Jesus, we thank you so much for what you accomplished for all of us at the cross that we might be redeemed, we might be set free because you willingly went and gave of your life at the cross. And today we honor you, we worship you. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit here to minister to our minds, our hearts, and our spirits. And today we just honor you, Lord. We lift up your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. What's everybody say together? Can we give him another good hand clap today just to honor, to praise him? Well, it's so wonderful to be able to worship together today. I wonder before you have a seat, if you would do me a favor, turn around and greet some people all around you. Tell them good morning. Tell them happy Mother's Day. Well, it's so good to see everybody. I love it on Mother's Day, seeing all the different families come in together as we worship together and study the Word together. Let, let me take a quick moment to welcome you if you're here today as a guest. It's great to have you with us. Uh, we are just honored that you would choose to take this Sunday morning to come and worship with us here at Journey. I'm going to ask you to do something if you're here for the very first time. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, take out one of those Connect cards from the seat back pocket of the chair in front of you. There's a pen there as well. And if you would fill that card out, check off the little box that says First Time Guest. And uh, on your way out of services here in, in a little bit, if you would, stop at our Welcome Center in the foyer, and you can drop that card off there. Our, our serve team has a, a wonderful gift that they want to be able to put into your hands, just a very simple way that we can say thank you for coming out to be a part of the service today. And also, one other thing we're going to ask of you here in a moment, we're going to talk about worshiping the Lord through our giving. We always ask of our guests, if you would, not to participate in the giving portion of our service. Uh, that's for our church family. It's a form of worship for them. And today, we're going to ask you just to sit back, relax, enjoy this service. It, it's our gift to you. And Journey Church, come on. Can we do this tomorrow, this morning? Can we give our guests today a great big round of applause? Give them a good hand clap today. Now, church family, a couple things for you real quick. Today, if, if today is your day to worship the Lord through your giving, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. Uh, you can utilize the offering envelopes provided for you in the tithing boxes on the back wall. You can visit our website at takethejourney.tv. That's a very safe easy and convenient way for you to be able to worship the Lord through your giving. And we just want to say thank you. We do every Sunday talk to you about your generosity and thank you for being a part of the vision here at Journey. We're able not only to make a difference here in our community, but all around the world through your giving. And so thank you very much. Uh, the next thing is if you have a prayer request, uh, you have a praise report, if you would take out one of the Connect cards, write it out on the back of that card, and you can drop those in the tithing box boxes or at the Welcome Center. We would love to pray over the different needs that you have for maybe yourself or family member or for a friend or somebody that you know. Uh, we love to lift up those needs before the Lord, but also at the conclusion of every service, our prayer team, some of our pastors are always here in the front in the altar area. We just love to pray over those different needs that you might have. And if you would prefer for somebody to pray with you in person, we would love that. So that's always available at the end of the service. Now, we're ready to jump into the message here in a few moments. My wife has a great message that she wants to be able to share with you. But as we talk about Mother's Day, there's a couple things we want to remind you about. Uh, listen, VBX is coming up rather quickly. We have VBX here at the Central Campus, at the Watson Campus. All the information is available at our website, takethejourney.tv. We're going to encourage you to go ahead and sign those kiddos up. 
but we're really going to encourage you to get involved and to sign up to be a volunteer because it's a great time of pouring into our kiddos. And then also for all the students, if you are junior high or high school, uh, we have movement student, student ministries and we have a great summer camp coming up this summer. And we're going to encourage you to sign up to be a part of that is one of those moments that you will remember for the rest of your life. Now today, you guys know we love to pray over different churches, other ministries throughout the area, talk to you about your generosity. I want you to see something. We've been showing you different pictures of the care point that you guys support down in Belize. Uh, we built one some years ago. We've been actually under construction for one uh, in, in the Port Leola division of uh, Belize City. And we've shown you this picture. Can you guys put that picture up there? That's the care point. We're actually going down in August to dedicate it. it the construction Construction on it is almost complete, and there are children literally every day that pour through this care point. They're fed uh, physically, but they're also fed spiritually as they're discipled. They're taught all about Jesus. We're grateful for that. We're grateful for your generosity, but let me show you another picture. Put the next picture up there for me. Because these are the mamas and some of our serve team that were down there with them uh, not too long ago. These are some of the mamas. And may, what you may not realize is that the kiddos that are taking care of the care points, uh, moms within the community go and they serve. They help the children. They feed them. They teach them about Jesus. And so today I wondered if we could take a moment to pray over our care points. But we want to be able to pray over the mamas that are there serving each and every day and being a blessing to these kiddos. So today, let's come together in agreement and let's pray the Lord's blessing over them. Father, we love you and thank you so much once again for your wonderful presence here with us today. And today as we celebrate moms, as we honor them, Lord God, we thank you for those down in Belize, Lord God, and all the different care points, these precious women who give up their time, Lord God, to go and love on those children, Father, to take the time to teach them all about Jesus. And today, we thank you that, Lord, you take care of them. You you provide for them. You refresh their hearts and their spirits, and you continually pour your presence out over those lives, Lord God. We thank you for the care points, Father, and just thank you that, Lord, as your presence is there, that children make lifelong decisions to serve you and to honor you with their lives. And Lord, we thank you for these workers, these precious mamas, Lord God, once again, for the time that they spend pouring into building your kingdom. Now, Father, today as we prepare to worship you through our giving, Lord God, I thank you that you always take care of us and provide for us, Lord God, as we place you first within our finances, Lord. And today as we prepare to study the word, Lord, I thank you so much that our hearts and our lives to open to everything that you have for us, Lord God. And we praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. What's everybody say together? Amen. Now, ladies, turn your attention to the screen. We've got something coming up in October, September, October. I think you're going to be very excited about Embraces Back. What I realize is, is this progression matters. We've got to go back to move forward. We've got to heal and restore so that life is not about navel gazing and only looking at, our, at ourselves going, oh, I'm so broken, I can't. Listen, we are going to hobble through life healed with the blood of Jesus with scars that get to tell a story of how he has healed us and restored us. Well, good morning, everyone. So glad to see so many people here and for Mother's Day. Ladies, are we excited about Embrace Conference this year? Yes? I mean, I know I am, and we're going to have a great time with Andy Andrew as our guest speaker. And so today, early bird registration opens. Okay, so go to takethejourney.tv slash embrace, and you can read more information on our guest speaker. And then, of course, always follow Journey Girls. Uh, on social media because that's where you get all of the updates. So we're looking forward to Embrace Conference and early bird registration will 
be open um, until June 1st. So make sure to gather all your friends and make plans to be there. I want to welcome everybody here today for Mother's Day. I know we have a great crowd, and hello to those out in the foyer as well. And we welcome those who are watching online. We're so excited that you've joined us today. And so I have a lot to share, and I was thinking as Pastor Jay was up here, like, hurry up. You're taking up my time. You know what I'm saying? But it's so very hard when he doesn't have the opportunity to preach, and he only gets a little bit of time. You know, I have to say, come, come on now. Come on. So, um, <laughs> but today is um, just an opportunity that I want to take to just love on all the moms and just all the women in general. And I do hope that this message not only ministers to the women here today, but also the men. I truly believe that it will. And so on Mother's Day, it is my like only opportunity that I get to like um, kind of show off my family. So while y'all, you know, give me a little bit here, let me, uh, let me take this chance to, to do so. But you know, I, I have three sons, they're grown, they're married, and are starting families of their own, and, um, and I usually show a picture of them and I talk about them, but guess what? I have something even better to talk about, and that is my grandbabies. Can all the grandparents say amen, amen? So I wanna show you a picture of my babies. Aren't they sweet? Okay, this is actually recently, recently like this week, we took pictures. And, um, and so we have Olivia in the front. She is four, and she is Nana's sweet girl for sure. And uh, Hudson, uh, Papa's holding Hudson. And let me just tell you, he is all boy. All boy. He loves to go play in the mud. He loves playing with tri all the boy stuff, which I adore. And he is the sweetest ever, just the sweetest. And then, of course, I'm holding Ella Kate, and she is our newest one. And she has so many sweet roles. And you just want to kiss her, kiss her, kiss her for sure. And, uh, and then, so we have three grandbabies, and also we have one on the way. Um, our second son, Bryce and Sarah, they are expecting a little girl in September. So at one time, it was me and all the boys. I was so outnumbered in my home, but now the girls are going to outnumber. Yes. Thank you, Lord. For sure. So, so very excited. So thank you for your undivided attention for me to show off my most important little ones. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So today we're going to get started into a message that I believe is a story of redemption. And it is the story of Hannah. And we just recently finished up a family series. And I just believe that this just carries over into that. And so I'm very excited to share about that this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father God, Lord, we just thank you for our time together today. And Lord, I just thank you that you're, you'll anoint your word, Father God, to minister deeply to our hearts. And God, I just pray that you would move in a mighty way in our services, Lord. Meet us right where we're at, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so for Mother's Day, I want us to look at a woman named Hannah. And I believe that her story will minister to all of us. And she is mentioned in the Old Testament, and there are only two chapters that completes her story. And then God also used her son, and he wrote two books of the Old Testament, First and Second Samuel. So I want to encourage you to go and read this after today so that you can also explore more into Hannah's story. But I'm going to give you the backstory of this as I lead into it, because this story is perfect for Mother's Day, and I know it's an inspirational story, a story of redemption, like I said. She married Elkanah, and she struggled with barrenness. And that's not really a word that we hear very often, barrenness, and probably in today's language, it's, we're more familiar with the word infertility, okay? So, the, so Hannah dealt with infertility. But one of the things that we learn from this story that we're about to get into is that God knows exactly what you're going through. Each and every person here, God knows even the smallest detail 
that you're facing in your life. And I believe that God knew even the smallest detail in Hannah's life. And he is concerned for everything that concerns us. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn to 1 Samuel. The first and second chapter are the story of Hannah. And if you don't have your Bibles or your Bible app on your phone, you can look on the big screen. So let's read 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 2. It says, there was a certain man whose name was Elkanah. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other Paniah. Paniah had children, but Hannah had none. I look at that and I think, okay, Hannah, she must have walked in some of the most tremendous pain. And I know that there are women here, myself included, that there have been times when having a family that we have walked through some pain. And back in biblical times, and the reason why it says he had two wives, because in biblical times, if you weren't able to have children, okay, that meant rejection within the community. And Hannah was Elkanah's primary wife. She was the first one. It says she is the one that he, that he loved dearly. But custom dictated that if she could not have children, he had to marry again. And that was to ensure his lineage. So not only, though, did she struggle with barrenness and this infertility issue, but Paniah, the other wife, was very cruel to her. And she provoked her, and she made fun of her. And I don't know about you, but that's what we call a mean girl, right? Paniah was a mean girl. She was mean to Hannah because she could provide her husband with children, and Hannah could not. So let's look a little bit further in 1 Samuel 1, verses 6 through 7. It says, because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. That's an interesting word to find in the Bible, irritate. I think, too, that she bullied her. And it said, this went on year after year. For years she dealt with this. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her until she wept and she would not eat. Well, how many of you know that if you were um, provoked and made fun of and someone was cruel to you, if you were dealing with a mean girl, you would probably cry too. You would cry and you would probably decide, I don't want to eat. Which tells me that Hannah probably dealt with and struggled with depression. And even though Elkanah loved her truly, and he tried to comfort her, the only thing that she knew to do was to go to the sanctuary and pray. And in the sanctuary where she went to pray, she reached out to God. We see here in this story that it was her heart to honor God above all, above everything else. And I can only imagine just how very difficult that was year after year to see that Paniah could have children and she could not. But let's read on just a little bit further. And trust me, I'm getting somewhere with this, okay? First Samuel 1, 10 through 11 says, In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. You see, Eli, Eli the high priest, 
is watching Hannah while she's in the sanctuary, while she's praying. Remember, she's weeping. She won't eat. So she's going to the safe place in the sanctuary to pray. Eli sees her in anguish, accuses her of being drunk. Isn't that crazy? I mean, just, okay, what was she doing that he thought that she was being drunk? But it truly, she was just sincerely, sincerely praying to the Lord. She was crying out to God. But to him, it looked like she was drunk. So after realizing that she was praying, Eli declares a blessing. He decrees a blessing over her. So let's look and see what this blessing is. This is what he says. We continue on reading 1 Samuel 1, 17 through 18. It says, Eli answered, go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went her way and ate something. And her face was no longer downcast. So how exciting. All of these years, she has been just distraught. She has been irritated by Paniah. And finally, as she's crying out to God, Eli, the prophet, sees her. And he decrees this blessing over her. But let me tell you what, what part jumps out to me the most in this scripture. It says, then she went her way and ate something. You know what I thought? Thank goodness she ate something. Because, you know, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I don't eat something, I get low blood sugar. You know what I'm saying? I get hangry. Anybody ever get hangry? I mean, that's a cross from being very, very hungry, and then you get very, very angry. And you know, there are times, that, and I, I think about this with Hannah, there are times when I am distraught, and I am downcast, crying my eyes out. Sometimes even in the fetal position, when, when you're going through something difficult, and all the ladies know, I call this having an ugly cry. Ladies, how many of you, you know what I'm saying? We have an ugly cry. And when I'm done having an ugly cry, my eyes are puffy, they're bloodshot, and my head is pounding. And you know what makes it better? If I go and eat something. So I'm very thankful for that one little part that jumped out to me that Hannah ate something. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Amen. <laughs> So Hannah goes home after she encounters Eli in the sanctuary. She goes home and she soon finds herself pregnant. And she has a son. And his name is Samuel. And she does as she promises. She's going to raise him for the Lord. And when he was just a young boy, okay, and then there's no age mentioned here. We don't know exactly what age that he was. But when he was a young boy, she took him back to Eli to serve as a priest. So here she is. She's crying out to God. She's crying out to God for a son. He answers that. She is blessed with a son. And it says in 1 Samuel 1, 26 through 28, she goes back to Eli whenever Samuel is of age. And she says to him, Pardon me, my Lord. As surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Now, isn't that exciting how things came full circle? Hold on just a second. So we look at the beginning of this story. When we look at the beginning of this story, can you not feel Hannah's pain? 
Can you not hear it? I could visualize it when I knew that she was crying bitterly and that she would not eat anything because I've been there. I felt that. But you know, here she is feeling this terrible pain, and she probably walked with an attitude of feeling less than. How many of you have ever encountered those kinds of feelings where you feel beat down and less than? Because the devil used her rival, Panaya. He used that mean girl to torment her. And so she felt less than. And you know, we ourselves, we can get caught up in that. We can get caught up in feeling less than. The enemy will torment us to make us feel less than as a mom or as a wife or just as a woman in general. The enemy can torment us. And where is that battlefield? It's in our minds. But then because of that, because we allow the enemy to torment us in our minds, we walk around in rejection and insecurity. And don't you know that Hannah walked in rejection and insecurity year after year, being provoked and being irritated by Paniah? So this is what I want to do. This, this is the whole story, the back story of her. But we want to see how faithful God is in this story, how this is a story of redemption. So I ask, what can we learn from Hannah's life? So let's look at how she overcame her pain and how she experienced God's best for her life. Because isn't that what we want also? We want to overcome whatever kind of pain that we're facing, and we want to experience God's best for our life. So I ask you, how can we do this? Well, we can do the same, just as Hannah did. So the first thing that we learned from her, and the first thing that we see that she did to overcome her pain, was that she cried out to God in grief. Now, we have all faced grief at some point in our lives. If you haven't yet, you will. It is part of life. You will experience loss of some sort, whether it be a loved one that you're close to, whether it be the loss of a job. or, or There's just so many different things that we could experience loss to where we need to grieve. But with Hannah, instead of letting her pain destroy her, she chose to cry out to God. And I want to underline the word that she chose because it's a choice for each and every one of us. It's a choice to let go of the pain that can overtake us and destroy us. You know, I look back on my own life and different times that I have cried out to God in grief. And one of the times that I'm reminded, and I, I don't even know really if I've shared this very much um, from the pulpit or just in general, but after I had my first son, Tyler, he was about 15 months old, and I was pregnant again. And we were so excited, and of course, you know, my husband, he's like telling everybody, and I mean, I had like just found out, so he's telling everybody, and everybody knows that we're having another baby. But eight weeks later, at Christmas time, actually on Christmas Eve, I miscarried that baby. And I was only eight weeks along. And I can tell you that that was tremendous pain. And there are many people here who have experienced that. And I cried out to God because I had already experienced so much grief because my mom had passed away when I was 18 years old. And so at this time, I was probably about 26. And I was facing this loss, one without my mom. And secondly, living in a different city away from family. 
And it was a very difficult time. But I remember sitting and weeping, just like Hannah did when she went to the sanctuary. I remember crying out to God and weeping and saying, God, please take this pain from me. Take this pain from me. And I said, I already know what it's like to carry so much grief from the loss of my mom. This is more than I can bear. Please take this pain. And I cried out to God in the midst of my grief. And do you know that by the following Christmas, I had a one and a half month old little boy because by the next year, we had continued on with our family. And so I told my son Bryce, I said, you're my rainbow baby. And he said, I'm what? I'm what? It's not like, it wasn't a term he had ever heard. I was like, you're my rainbow baby. And I had to explain to him why. Because God had promised me more children. And therefore, the rainbow stands for a promise. And you were my promise. You were my rainbow. After that very difficult time. Yeah, you should have seen the look on his face. It was crazy. He doesn't like to be called that, by the way. Um, (laughs) He would rather be called the the middle child than my rainbow baby. (laughs) So we see in Psalms 57, 1 through 2, it says, Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, for in you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose in me. You see, God gave me comfort in my grief, and he could give you comfort in your grief, whatever that grief looks like. Because God knows exactly, exactly what you're walking through. And I think a lot of times we just think that nobody understands that we're in this thing alone, and there's, there's no hope. That's how we, we isolate ourselves. We pull back from God. But no, he knows exactly, exactly what you're going through. In fact, ladies, you are, the, uh, you are a daughter of the Most High God. It says, I cry out to God Most High. You are a daughter. You are a handmaiden of the Lord. And he loves you so much that when you face grief, if you will cry out to him, he will comfort you. He will meet you right where you're at. And so I tell you that story so that you'll understand we have all been there. We all face these things. We all encounter grief at some point or another. So she cried out to God in her grief. And secondly, we can learn from Hannah's life and we can do the same because she pursued God in her desperation. You know, there's this old saying, desperate times call for desperate measures. Well, Hannah was desperate. And there have been times when you have been desperate as well, when I have been desperate. But we have that choice to make, remember? We can choose to call on God in our desperation. We can choose to pursue him with all of our heart. Or we can choose to run from God. We can choose to pull away and get angry and blame God. How many of you know we've all done that at some point or another? And I know it's part of being human. It's our human emotions. But you know what? God can handle our human emotions. He can. It doesn't catch him by surprise. So we can choose to pursue God or we can run from him. It's up to us. You know, another difficult time that that I faced was, how many years ago was this? 2016. Is it six years? Almost seven years? We all, I say we all, (laughs) 
Most of us endured more than others, but we encountered a natural disaster in our own community. The great flood of 2016. Do we all remember that? Yes? Well, let me tell you, that was a time for me where I truly did feel desperation. But I made that choice to pursue God. I remember standing in the middle of my house, a newly built house, by the way, that was torn to shreds, sheetrock dust everywhere, every bit of paid for furniture that I was so excited about was in the front yard in a pile, a debris pile. I don't like the word debris, by the way. And I remember thinking, Lord, what are we going to do? We had insurance for everything, but we did not have it for flood. But can I tell you that even though at that moment I felt so alone and so distraught and devastated, that was my word, I felt devastated. Regardless of how devastated I felt, God met me right where I was at. And can I tell you, I couldn't see it in the beginning. I couldn't see it right away, and I couldn't tell people right away when we were walking through that, when we were in the midst of that storm, in the midst of that difficult time. But I look back now, and I see that God, he took such good care of us. Through that entire process, God was so faithful to us. And I told someone recently, I said, you know, when it came to the flood, I felt like every seed that I had ever sown, that me and my husband had ever sown in all of our lives, in all of our life in ministry, it all came back to us when we needed it the most. And don't you know that's how God works? Let's give him a hand. Yes. Because God is faithful. God is faithful. And so Hannah pursued God in her desperation. And that's what we had to do. In the middle of all of that devastation, we said, no, we're not letting go of God. We're not pushing him away. We're not going to get angry and blame God. We're going to pursue him. We're going to draw closer to him. Because Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. He knows when we're hurting and he's close to us. And facing difficulty can make us feel like we're alone, but God is there with us in the middle of everything we're facing. Amen? So how do we pursue God? Well, there's many ways. You're here today, worshiping with other believers. You're pursuing God. You turn on your worship music, mama, while you're cleaning the house, or dad, while you're driving down the street, turn on that worship music and sing out to God. Call out to him in prayer. That's how we pursue him. Get connected in a life group. Get connected with other believers. Start serving at church. That's how we pursue God. Those are the things that we do. And we don't need to settle into that sadness and that place where we're weeping and we cannot eat. We need to take action to pursue him. Hannah pursued God in her desperation. And the last thing that we see and that we learn from Hannah's life is that she trusted God despite the difficulty. Boy, that is a tough one, right? To trust God when everything flooded? To trust God when I miscarried a baby? You know, it's just our human nature that we want to be in control of things, and we struggle with that, don't we? And that's what keeps us from trusting God is that we want to be in control. And we don't want to let go enough to say, okay, God, I know that you know best. Because when we're out of control, man, all we do is worry and we fret, and anxiety takes over. 
it gets us absolutely nowhere. Don't you agree that it's better to give it to God, to trust him despite the difficulty? The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. I love that scripture. It's one of my favorites. It's not in our own understanding. We will never understand some of the things that happen to us in our lives, but I know this much, that I know the one who is in control. I know the one, God, who I can trust. He makes my path straight. And we see here in this story of Hannah in these two chapters in the Old Testament that she completely trusted God. She trusted God so much that she even returned her son to him. And Samuel spent his life serving and honoring God. It said all the days of his life. So ladies, I want us to learn to trust God with all the areas of our lives. And that is including our children. And I know that's hard. I know that's tough. Some of us have faced and will face some very difficult times with our children. I mean, anybody who's had teenagers know difficult times. But we can't control everything. Not in our kids' lives, but we can trust God with them. Amen? So our kids, they learn from our example, right? Seeing us trust God, seeing us pursue God, seeing us cry out to God, they will do the same. I watched my mom. I watched my granny. They trusted God. They pursued God. I remember many times my mom crying out to God. And that's where I learned to also trust in him. So what we learn in Hannah's story is that God wants us to be dependent on him even in the most difficult times. And when we trust in him, when we are dependent on him, then it's going to cause our children to also be dependent on him. So Hannah cried out in her grief. She pursued God in her desperation. She trusted God despite the difficulty. And when I read this where it says God wants us to be dependent on him even in the most difficult times, I am reminded of about six months before my mom passed away. I really think, really think she probably knew that her time was limited. She was sitting in her chair in our living room, and she called me in there, and she said, kneel down here by me. I need to tell you something. I was 18 years old, getting ready to go off to college. And she said to me, I know that you depend on me a lot. And I did. She, she was my spiritual guidance. She was the one, I mean, I needed to pray about something. And she was the one that helped me. She said, I know you depend on me a lot. But I need you to know that you need to depend on God. And that God is faithful to take care of you. Now, don't you know, mamas, that's what we need for our own kids. It's our goal for them to become independent. Independent from us, but dependent on God. And so I want to encourage you today to be that example to your children and to others so that they can see that they can also go to God. They can also depend on him. And I'm so thankful for the foresight that my mom had to at least say those things to me before she was no longer with me. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, and I have done it before, cried out to God, pursued him and trusted him with the most difficult things in my life because God is faithful to us and he knows what we're going through. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you. 
Lord, for this opportunity to learn from Hannah's life. Lord, that you are faithful to be with us always as we trust in you. You go before us, Lord. You make those paths straight. And God, we just thank you for always being with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. And as we depend on you, Lord, you are so faithful to meet us, Lord, right where we're at. Thank you, Jesus. And with your eyes closed, If there's anybody here today that you would say, I'm not depending on God like I should. I'm not pursuing him. I'm not trusting him. I want to give you that opportunity today to cry out to him. So if you say that's me, please raise your hand. Just slip your hand up. And we're not going to call on you. We're not going to. Just lift your hand if that's you. Thank you, Jesus. I see those hands, yeah. These precious mamas here today. So if that's you, I want you to just... Everybody, let's pray this together. Say, Dear Lord, we thank you for the price that you paid so that we can know you and have eternal life. We accept you, Lord, to be the Lord and Savior and to rule over our lives. We love you, and we thank you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Oh, let's give it up for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, it wouldn't be Mother's Day if I didn't share a gift with you. And of course, one of my favorite gifts. I don't know where my husband is. But come on out here, babe. So I would like to, for us to pray over all the moms. If you're a mom, a grandma, spiritual mom, foster mom, adopted mom, whatever kind of mom that you are, please stand to your feet. All the moms. I want to pray over them, and then we're going to... There's a lot. And those in the foyer, we see you. Can we give the mamas a good hand? Yes, yes. Come on, give it up for them. I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you, okay? Father God, Lord, we just thank you for all of these moms. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that as each and every mom takes care of their children, or prays for their adult children, or loves on those grandbabies. We pray, God, that you would just minister to our heart. And Lord, in the most difficult times, Lord, we thank you. Praying for these moms, Lord, as they trust you. Praying for these moms as they pursue you, Lord. God, that you would move in their lives in a mighty way. Equip them. You've called them, Lord, to be the caregiver and nurturer to their homes. And we thank you, Lord, that whatever difficulties they're facing, Lord, we thank you that you are faithful and you know exactly what they're going through. Thank you for ministering to their hearts and blessing them. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says amen, amen, amen. Yes. Don't, don't sit down. Stay standing. Yeah, all the moms stay standing because they're going to be passing out a gift. Back by popular demand are yeah. the beautiful, yummy crumble we, cookies. <laughs> crumble cookies for everyone. Right. We've given out a lot of gifts here, but this by far 
was the one last year. Everybody's like, oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> so I did a little math. Yes, uh, he did. We spent the, you know, we, we picked these up and I want, pay attention to this. The amount of cookies that we purchased is 381,600 calories. <laughs> But not but, today. But my wife said, not today. Not today. So They're calorie free. <laughs> so here, here, and I'm just going to tell you, those cookies are amazing. Stacy actually took hers home yesterday and last night when she's working our message, I ate it. Um, <laughs> so they're really good. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. So They're, they're taste tested they, and approved by they Pastor Jay. <laughs> sure. They are for sure. So mamas, thank you for all that you do. We love you and appreciate you. I wonder if one more time we could go and give all the moms a great big hand clap. Come on, give it up for them. Come on, hey, if you're still a mom in the back waiting on your cookie, we got them for you, don't go anywhere. You're like, I'm not going anywhere. I got a cookie coming. You have to remind me. Lunch can wait. This is a crumb. This ain't this ain't Great American Walmart cookie. This is crumble cookie. We do it right around here. Stay standing. They, they got plenty for you. They're coming. Don't fight each other, please. No nail, no, no nail marks, no, no biting. We're gonna get you a cookie. This ain't Black Friday. You ain't gotta trample nobody for no cookie. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just a few more in the back. Once they get theirs, then I'll let everyone else stand. Dad, you just, you just got to sit there. Today's not your day. Today's you come in a few weeks. Today's not your day. You just got to relax. You just got to relax. Who's got, a, who's got a, big, a big lunch coming up? Any big lunches today? Anybody, anybody? How many of you moms are cooking your own Mother's Day lunch? Anybody? Yeah, there's like eight of you. Like, yes, that's me. I've been slaving all weekend to cook my own lunch. It's going to be great. Well, look, they are starting to wrap up in the back. You can go ahead. We've got some moms back here in the corner, ushers. Beautiful. We're getting ready to dismiss in just a moment. All right. Well, look, why don't we stand to our feet as we dismiss today? So good to see your smiling faces here. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms in the house. We love you. We appreciate you. Go let your kids and your husband spoil you today. And if you need prayer for anything at all, we have prayer partners up here at the front. Don't forget this. We don't just go to church. So let's go be the church. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. We'll see you next week.